Good evening, friends. Welcome to my channel, Pediatric Classes. Today, we are going to discuss about the IAP STG guidelines, that is the standard treatment guidelines. Uh, so, with this intro, let me start sharing my screen. If you're not a subscriber of my channel, please do subscribe and support the initiative. So, at the onset, uh, let me thank the whole team behind this guidelines. Starting from Dr. Ramesh Kumar sir, our IAP president, Dr. Abhinder sir, Dr. Piyush Gupta sir, Dr. Vinny Saxena sir, and the lead authors, Dr. Ahila Ayavu and the co-authors, Dr. Ravindra Kumar and Dr. Tushar Godbole. All of you uh, have done a great job. Thank you so much. It is just the guidelines are so crisp and clear. I request all the viewers to go through the guidelines. These uh, guidelines are freely available in the net and all of you, most of the IAPs would have got it through the email also. Uh, so with this, uh, let me start the discussion. Discussion. So, congenital hypothyroidism is the most common cause of preventable mental retardation, as you all know. And the incidence is more common in the India than in the West. So, what is the incident? It is 1 in 1000 to 1 in 1500 live births. The sampling should be done from cord blood or a postnatal sample can be done at 48 to 72 hours for screening. When should we do the second screening? Second screening should be done in preterm neonates less than 37 weeks or a low birth weight or very low birth weight neonates. Ill and preterm neonates admitted to an ICUs and this or those babies whose specimen has been collected within half an hour to 24 hours of life or in case of multiple births, especially in case of same sex twins. When should we repeat the specimen? It should be collected after two weeks of age or two weeks after the first screening test was carried out. Now, we do a primary TSS screen because that is better and more sensitive and specific for the diagnosis of congenital hypothyroidism compared to a primary T4 thing. The only disadvantage is we may tend to miss the central hypothyroidism which has an incidence of around 1 in 16,000 to 1 in 30,000 live births. This TSS measured from the DBS that is the dry blood spot is expressed in whole blood units whereas a venous TSH is expressed in serum units. The conversion is like 2.2 in the whole blood units will you give you the serum units. This is really important because when the patients get you the results, sometimes what happens is they are getting your results in whole blood units. So the conversion factor is very important. 2.2 is the converting fraction. So 2.2 into whole blood units will give you the serum units. Then imaging that includes an ultrasonogram and also a scintigraphy that should be done after the congenital hypothyroidism is biochemically confirmed. It can be done up to seven days after the start of health thyroxine if the TSH is high. Physical examination to detect cardiac malformation should be done in patients with high TSH. So what is the treatment? Treatment is thyroxine. It should be started as soon as possible and no later than first two weeks of life. Initial thyroxine dosage, 10 to 15 mics per kg per day. How long we should give? In case of hormonogenic CH treatment, we can go up to 3 years straight and then stop the treatment for 4 weeks and then redo the uh, T4 and the TSH values. If after stopping for 4 weeks and the results are normal, we can actually uh, like take it as it's hormonogenic CH and we keep the patient under follow-up. But if the results are abnormal, we have, may have to restart the treatment. Whereas in case of structural thyroid abnormalities causing a CH, lifelong thyroxine replacement is required. Suppose a baby, we are starting the patient on l -troxin. when should we the, do the first follow-up? The first follow-up should be done after two weeks of starting a treatment with a T4 or FT4 and after four weeks, what we should do is uh, not only a T4 and FT, but also a TSH. This point is very important because this target the T4 and FT work will start getting normalized within two weeks, whereas TSH will get take time. It may normalize only within four weeks. So there's no point in doing a repeat TSH after two weeks. So the best step to think is to do a T4 or FT4 after two weeks and then do a TSH along with FT4 or FT4 after four weeks of okay of starting of treatment the target is to raise the upper half of the reference range by two weeks in case of t4 ft4 and by four weeks of age by four weeks of starting treatment in case of tsh so these are the uh, targets so tft should be done every one to two monthly until six months of age and every two to four monthly from six to 36 months of age uh, of uh, further altroxin doses are adjusted based on the tft 
once you do taking doing a treatment change so when suppose you're stepping up the dosage in between or stepping down the dosage what we should do is immediately within four weeks we should do the repeat testing a repeat hearing test should be carried out before school um, the, I'm sorry for this slide. It's not very clear, I know. Uh, don't worry. This is uh, available in the net, the PDF. You can get a printout of it. Very good uh, chart. This is. I already taken a printout and kept it on my table for easy reference. So, TSH on the heel prick uh, or the cord blood by DBS. So, what we do, either at, if we get a more than 20 value or more le or le less than 20. If it is less than 20, it is normal. If it is more than 20, it can either be more than 40 or in the range of 20 to 40. If more than 40, send the blood for confirmatory sam uh, sample for TSH and FT4 after 72 hours. Start the patient on eltroxin and imaging should be done for etiological diagnosis. And if the TSH is in the range of 20 to 40, send confirmatory venous sample for TSH and FT4 after 72 hours and then we are actually having four limbs out there. The first two limbs, these in condition, when we say the low T4, whereas these two limbs, we have normal T4. When I say low T4, please note here, either the T4 is low or is it is in the lower half of the reference range. So, uh, low T4 and high TSH. That means high TSH means if the TSH is more than 20 in the first two weeks of age or more than 10 beyond 2 weeks of age, it is taken as high TSS. T4 or FT4 low or in the lower half of the reference range that is coming in this file. Start the patient on eltroxin and work up for the etiological diagnosis. Suppose the T4 is low and our TSS is normal. So that means low FT4 means low or in the lower half of the reference range is our FT4 or T4 and TSS is normal. When I say normal, it is less than 20 in the first two weeks of age and less than 10 beyond. Again, start the patient on eltroxin because our T4 is low. We are taken as congenital hypothyroidism. Suppose in these two limbs, we have a normal T4 and a high TSH. In the first limb, in this limb, normal T4 and high TSH. So high TSH means more than 20 in the first two weeks and more than 10 in the next two weeks. So, or beyond two weeks. So, and the TSH is normal that means it should be in the upper half of the reference range we repeat the tsh after two weeks and see if the tsh is more than 10 we take the tsh persistently more than 10 beyond three weeks with the normal t4 or tf uh, ft4 start the patient on eltroxin and if it is less than 10 we take it as normal and the last limb deals with normal t4 and normal tsh normal t4 means upper half of the reference range and normal tsh means less than 20 in the first two weeks of life uh, and less than 10 beyond two weeks so these points we have to be very clear because you know, what is normal tsh or what is an uh, normal t4 like that they don't get confused in the reference range of it it should be in the upper half of the reference range for a t4 to be told as normal and the tsh is very simple it is less than to, uh, the reference where we should see the tsh to be told as normal it should be less than 20 in the first two weeks of age and beyond two weeks it is less than 10. Now coming to the acquired hypothyroidism, these are the clinical features that should raise the concern of acquired hypothyroidism which include short stature, pseudoprecocious puberty, poor growth velocity, goiter, dry skin, constipation, sluggishness, macroorchidism, weight gain, calf muscle hypertrophy, galactoria, cardiomyopathy, so repetitions, etc. Common causes, most common cause as you all know is autoimmune and Hashimoto's thyroiditis and certain drugs like anticonvulsants, amiodarone, lithium, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, etc. Iodine deficiency, central hypothyroidism like due to trauma, tumor or tuberculosis and some miscellaneous causes like post-stability or post-thyroidectomy, etc. There's another diagram uh, approach to acquired hypothyroidism also given in the guidelines. So this is also important when you get an abnormal TST, that is like you suppose you get a normal TSH and a low T4. We have to do a free T4 then. If the free T4 is normal, it may be either TBG deficiency or maybe because of hypoproteinemia, it should be to be, refer to be referred to an endocrinologist for further evaluation. If the FT4 is low, consider central hypothyroidism and again send it for endocrine opinion in the range of 5 to 10. Uh, this uh, uh, chart is very good because many times we can see uh, bigger children or even adults coming up with all these results. T TSH in range of 5 to 10. 
the T4 is normal and the TPOs are negative, it may be because of obesity or some drugs and all, you can just repeat the TFT later. But if the T4 is normal and a positive thyroid peroxidase antibodies, you have to repeat it every six monthly. Uh, and if the TSH is more than 10, you have to treat and find the etiology. You have to see the clinical features, biochemistry, essential investigation. Please note, these are the essential investigation for acquired hypothyroidism, TSH plus total T4 and later even pre-T4 too. Uh, optional investigation, antithyroid peroxidase, antibodies, antithyroglobulin antibodies, etc. Imaging, ultrasound is if necessary for primary hypothyroidism and an MRI brain, brain for central hypothyroidism. Oral levothyroxine can be started based on the weight of the child or body surface area and should be continued lifelong. So this is the formula 100 microgram per meter square body surface area or we can remember like 1 to 3 years it is 4 to 6 mics per kg per body weight uh, or 3 to 10 years it is 3 to 5 mics per kg and 10 to 16 it is 2 to 4 mics per kg. This uh, is also really important one, uh, very very uh, important. Uh, so please note in congenital we were studying at a dose of 10 to 15 mics per kg per day. In case of acquired hypothyroidism we started in 1 to 3 years it is 4 to 6 in 3 to 10 years 3 to 5 and 10 to 16 it is 2 to 4 mics per kg. Further dose adjustment are to be uh, adjusted according to the repeat TSH and the T4. We have to maintain this TSH, T4 all in the range. For long-standing full-blown untreated hypothyroidism, thyroxine should be started at a lower dose and gradually stepped up for several weeks to reach the full dosing. So all, all these things were given in the document. Uh, these are the references which are there in the document. Uh, I hope uh, the session is useful for you. If you find it uh, useful, please do share with your friends and support the initiative. Thank you so much. Uh, the team behind these guidelines, the central IAP team and the authors once again. Uh, thank you all for the patient listening. Stay safe.